Buklatin po natin ang ating mga Bible. Open your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy. Tutuloy po natin ang pag-aaral ng aklat ng Deuteronomy. I've shared to you the introduction a while ago. Deuteronomy chapter 1 to 3. Now we will be reading chapters 4 to 6. But for our introductory verse, let us just read chapter 6. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 to verse number 9. This will be the key verses that... Uh, that uh, is so important in our subject, in our in the whole book of Deuteronomy, even one of the best parts of the whole Bible that we can remember. Let us read. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. Yung mga talata ang binasa po natin, ang tawag po dyan ng mga ojo ay Shema. From the first word, hear, yung Shema Yisrael. Ang ibig sabihin po, makinig ka o Israel. Panalangin po nila yan hanggang ngayon. Alam niyo ba, ng bansang Israel, meron po silang nilalagay sa kanilang loo na parang metale. Kasi talagang ginawa nilang literal yung and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So meron silang tali, tapos merong box na maliit, nakalagay sa ulo nila. Pag sila po ay mananalangin, nakalagay po doon yung verse ng Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Ando niya, lagi huli lang panalangin niya, pakinggan po. Is, ginawa po nila yan. But if you would go to the context of this, God wants the next generation to learn who He is. Okay po. God wants the next generation to be educated of how God is great, how powerful He was, how powerful He is, how holy He is, and how loving and merciful He is a God to them. Amen? And, and that's, that, that's the commandment of the Lord for Israel. And so, our preaching today is the first part of Deuteronomy, which is chapters 1 to 6, and I entitled it, The Wisdom in the Wilderness. The wisdom in the wilderness. These 40 years journey from Exodus of Egypt up to the time they were in the plains of Moab is a clear, are you with me now? Is a clear lesson for God's people to learn who God is in their life. Kailangan po natin maintindihan na hindi na po natin kailangan ng apat na pong taon pa ng eksperyensya kung paano ang Diyos ay kikilos, kung paano ang Diyos ay mamamalo, kung paano may mamamatay pa. We don't need that anymore. Why? Because Israel has spent 40 years of their life trying to put the lesson down to us, written in the books of Deuteronomy, and the lessons are in the verses of different pages of the Bible for us to know who God is. Yeah. Yung katanungan na pagkukuha po natin sa kanila ay hindi na po natin kailangan pa ng 40 years. Baka nga hindi umabot ang 40 years sa atin. We're praying for a long life. But praise the Lord, these 40 years experience of the people of God in numbers should be a lesson to every generation, to every child of God, to every ministry on who the Lord is in our life. The wisdom in the wilderness. The wisdom in the wilderness. May karunungan po. Though we know the tragic events that happened there. There are certain people who were plagued by God. Can you imagine they witnessed the plagues of Egypt punishing those enemies of Israel. But found themselves a part of these plagues as well. They were also, you know, uh, punished by God. Can you imagine that? Sinaksihan ng lila yung mga parusa. Hindi sila natuto. Pagdating nila sa wilderness, sila din tuloy na parusahan. Are you with me? Yeah. And so it is sad. It is sad as well. When we God's people continually reading His words, understanding what happened for that 40 years experience, plus all the books of our Bible, and, at this, and, and how sad it would be when we would find ourselves one day under God's punishment too. Uh, but pangit naman yun. 
na plague na nga sila, pati ba naman tayo? So, I mean, we can learn from their lesson. That is why the Apostle Paul was continually telling that what happened to them are examples for us to follow. Meron na ho tayong pwedeng tingnan. We can see somehow what God wants in our life because we have seen Him moving in the lives of these people not too different with us when it comes to obedience. Hindi ah. naman tayo ganong iba sa kanila. Meron bang magsasabi at makakapagsabi, grabe naman ang layo naman ang pag... Ang la I am so far from their spiritual life. I might be more faithful than them. Uh -huh. Are you with me now? Nagigens yung pong ibig ko sabihin? Kung ikaw ay anak, if you're a child of God, and we have been spending our time studying the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and if you would really try to see these people, you would find somehow that if Moses were a type of Christ, Israel is your type. When I say type picture, kung si Moses nilalarawan minsan si Kristo, para bagang ang buhay ng Israel ang nilalarawan yung Christian life mo. Are you with me now? Tama ba? Na minsan ang bait-bait mo, sumusunod ka sa Panginoon, pero minsan nagko-complain ka. Sometimes you also murmur against God, Lord, bakit ganito ang nangyayari? Tapos eto na naman ang Diyos, maawain pa rin, binigyan ka pa rin ng chance. I don't know about you personally, but I believe, because I'm a child of God, I know what's happening in my life. I know this heart, wicked heart that everyone has. Are you with me now? This deceitful heart that we have, this flesh that we have, which even the Apostle Paul wanted to come out from it. He wanted to die. He knew how wretched man he was, but he knew the mercy of God was there. We are like the Israelites, people, continually disobeying God sometimes, and we are receiving such punishments from the Lord. But praise God Almighty, this relationship that we have from Christ is the same as the relationship of God with His people. We are bound by a covenant. Amen. Praise the Lord, our salvation can never be lost. Praise God, we're saved forever. Praise God, despite of this imperfection, despite of the carnality that we have, despite of this poor, hard life that we are living in, we have a relationship with God. Praise God for our salvation. Praise God for covenant. Praise God for the New Testament that was confirmed and ratified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salamat, kagaya rin ng Israel. Hindi tayo nagpapasalamat dahil nagpasaway tayo, pinaparusahan tayo ng Diyos. Nagpapasalamat tayo na sa kabila ng pagkukulang natin, pirmado ang covenant na tinanggap po si Kristo, hindi ka na mawawala ng kaligtasan. Salamat sa Panginoon. Pero dahil buhay ka pa, sana matuto tayo doon sa karunungan na iniwala sa atin ng Israel na kahit tayo mga anak ng Diyos, hindi pwedeng ang Diyos ikukonsintihin tayo sa ating mga kanukuhan. Ah. Diyan? Yeah. Knowing what happened to them, we can conclude that despite of this, with, even with these mercies and grace that we have from the Lord, He remains holy and hates sin. Are you with me? Uh, Nananatili siyang banal na hindi mo matatanggungan. Right. Yung mga mga pulis dito sa mundo ito. This morning, I watched the news and there was a crime committed. A daughter killed her own mother uh, and buried her inside her house. Can you imagine? And they hid her. She and her boyfriend killed her own mother and, and, and buried her Somewhere there in their own house. Septic tank ba yung ginagawa na yun? Yung bumili na doon. And still, we're found out. After, you know, months na ba yun? Was it months or years? Years? The police officials found it out. My folks, these were policemen that has no foreknowledge and, and, and omniscience. But the crimes committed were found. How much more with a God that can see everything in our life? Uh, that can see the deepest part of our heart? Uh, we cannot hide from God. Wake up, folks. If there is sin in your life today, you have to realize you cannot hide from the Lord. Uh, yeah. Kaya ho, maaisip natin yun, ano? 
hindi pa itatama. Kailangan na itama ito. Kasi hindi magiging masaya. Eh bakit? Ano? Why I'm still okay right now? Knowing Israel and God, you would just know that God is merciful. God is just giving us chances upon chances just to be right with Him once again. Amen? Amen? There is wisdom in the wilderness. There is lesson in what these people experienced for 40 years with the God of heaven. And so let us learn such things that we can learn in the passages of Deuteronomy chapters 1 to 6. The first thing that you find there is the word preservation. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7, let us see. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. In a place which with too much lackness and dryness in the desert place, they lacked nothing to survive. Are you with me? They might not have the things that they wanted, but my folks, they had all the things they needed to survive the wilderness. God has preserved a people for 40 years and has been preserving them for a thousand years. That's why until today, the nation of Israel still exists as a country. God has preserved His people. God has preserved His words. God has preserved whatever He wants to last until He comes back again. God provided their needs. Are you with me now? God protected them from hunger. God protected them, protected them from the enemies. God protected them from violence that, that they could face with the enemies around them. God was even present with them. Are you with me? Take away God and add anything that you want to add in your life and still you are incomplete. But through the wilderness we find they don't have much things to think that they want. They might not have their own houses there. They're just building this. But the cloud and the fire, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire that went through them is the presence of Almighty God letting them survive those 40 years of wilderness because there is a God that Huh? Folks, you have to realize that the God you're serving can preserve you despite all. You might have this hunger, you might have these pandemics, we might experience some blackness, or whatever it is that you might say in trial or a terrible testing in life that you are facing right now. Knowing the God of this wilderness, you can find that He can preserve. Huh? Yeah. We can, he can preserve. There are so many, so many times that you think it's the end. Just as what they experienced at the Red Sea, it was a dead end. But they saw the salvation of the Lord. It will take your memory to what we are studying when you experience such trials. Ma, 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 magugulat ka, parang ganun din ah. Parang ending na. Pero hindi pa pala. Ah. Amen? Akala mo, matindi na. Maraming gustong sumuko. Maraming gustong mag-give up. Maraming gustong mag-blame, sir. And sometimes tayo yun. There are many times it could be us. Na para magan tayo pa yung nagblame sa Panginoon. Pero pag nakita natin, at tayo naman din, I believe you have experienced such grace from the Lord that has preserved you in certain times of life na napakahirap, napakabigat, at makikita mo, oh, mura, hindi pa talaga huli pag ang Panginoon kasama ko. You see, God can preserve Another thing that you have to see there in the first chapters, which is the summary of the wilderness, is the power of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. All these cities, let us just first read verse number 1, up to verse number 6. Para may tindihan niyo yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa kanila through Moses. Ready? Are you there? Let us read verse 1. Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan. And all the king of Bashan came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Edrei. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people in his land into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Hezbon. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands all 
also the, the king of Bashan and all these people and we smote him until none was left to him remaining and we took all these cities at that time there was not a city which we took not from them three score cities all the regions of our God the kingdom of Og and Bashan all these cities were fenced cities with high walls gates and bars beside unwalled towns a great many verse 6 and we utterly destroyed them as we did unto Sihon, king of Hezbon, utterly destroying the men, women, children of every city. Before I share to you the lesson, I was reading the passages. Why did God, why did God allow them to kill the Edomites? Naalala niyo Edomites? Yung galing kay Iso? Di ba hindi sila pinadaan, pinaigot sila? Do you remember that? Hello? Why did not God allow them to kill all these Ammonites and Moabites? And then you find God telling them, Because I also promised that to Lord. Kita lang yun si Lord? O mga kini Abraham? Binibigyan niya rin pala kasi talaga ng lupa yun. Kaya hindi lang pinag... Tinano lang rin ha? Okay ho? Pero hindi po pinaalis ng Panginoon doon yung mga Moabites at yung mga Ammonites. Kasi si Moab at si Ammon, anak po yun ni Lord yung sa kanyang dalawang anak na nagpasaway. Okay po? Tapos si Iso rin, pinakuha din pala ng Lord ng lupa. Kaya hinayaan ng Diyos na hindi sila paraanin at bumili lang sila ng mga pagkain doon at dumiretso, dumaan lang sila sa post because God also had a covenant with them. What a God! Amen? The God of all men. Siya po talaga ang tunay ng Diyos. But let us go back. Pero pagdating doon sa promise na na para na sa kalit na, kahit napakataas, because if you would see here, they are more powerful than other cities. They all, the, the king of Bashan is a powerful king. Their cities are walled, wall. their cities have posts, their cities are guarded, their cities are fenced, are you with me now? With bars and gates and walls. Uh. Are you with me? But they were easily defeated. Why? That is the power of the God. Do not belittle the God that you are serving today. The God that we are serving today is the God of this Israelite. No matter how unfaithful they were, praise the Lord for that covenant. They witnessed the power of God. Amen. And we utterly destroyed them as we did unto Simon, King of Israel. Folks, listen, we are serving a powerful God. The 40 years experience of the people of Israel might not too perfect, might not too ideal, but praise God, there is wisdom. We are serving a powerful God. Even though we know this, there are many times that we see life as if God has no power at all. Minsan, nararamdaman natin yan na parang pagang ang Diyos mo ng kapangyarihan sa ating mga pinagkakagawa. Pag-discourage tayo, pag gusto na natin sumuko, nalilimutan natin ang katotohanan na mga pangyarihan mo na ang Diyos. There was one time, it's so hard to think of the bills that we need to pay in this church. And as your pastor trying, you know, this blessing try to tell me it's, it's, it's not enough, you cannot do it, it's so hard. I am forgetting this, this imperfect memory that I have. Is forgetting the fact that I or we as a church is serving a powerful God. Para magpaginiwanan natin ito. Kaya lang, syempre, dahil tao lang tayo, hindi ka naman kasi biglaan. Dahil power ko lang panginoon ko, kaya tatawid ako kahit palintang meron dito ako mamamatay. Hindi naman ganun ang Diyos. Binigyan niya naman tayo ng karunungan na gawin ng tama. Kaya lang dahil na maraming options, bilang mga tao, siyempre, nag-iisip din tayo ng paraan. Nag-iisip tayo ng paraan pa paano masasolve ang isang problema. We're trying to think of the ways that we can do so that, you know, we can decide the right decision. But somehow, during these times that I experience natin, ang nagiging malaking problema kasi natin, yung ba, we will not decide, we will not push through because we're afraid we cannot make it. Yun ang minsan nagiging talagang problema natin. Para makapag nalimut, when we forget that we have a powerful God. Are you with me? Of course we have to face problems. Of course we have to solve our own. Minsan naman huwag natin i-blame lahat kay Lord. 
na bago ba ang lahat ng problema natin, Lord is solve mo, Lord is solve mo. Hindi ganun. God has given us wisdom to think. God has given us wisdom to plan. But with all of these things na inaaralan natin, na, 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 na naranatama natin at na-experience natin, huwag mong kakalimutan makapangyarihan ng Diyos mo. Yung option na yun ang huwag mong tatanggalin. Are you with me? Huwag mong tatanggalin, huwag mong malilimutan makapangyarihan ng Diyos. Kaya yun yung sinabi ni Moses, after 40 years, is it enough for them to experience and witness what happened? No! Moses in the last book of the law even made it more clear to them. Their experience was not enough. There must be a reminder once again. Maybe you would forget. I know you witnessed already. But maybe you would forget. God with you or you with God have fainted terrible, powerful walled cities. Maybe you might forget you have a powerful God. Of course, another lesson from the wilderness is punishments. Chapter 1, verse 35 to 37, it says, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Ito yung mga na-experience nila throughout the 38 years. Two years yung una, hanggang foot of Mount Sinai, and another 38 years in the wilderness, wanderings. Huwag niyong kakalimutan niya. Baka mamaya, puro positive ang naisip natin, kaya kahit pasaway tayo, tuloy lang. No, you have to see this as well. Punishments. Chapter 1, verse 35 to 37. Chapter 1, verse 35 to 37. Are you there? Say Amen. Amen. Surely, there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Say, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he had trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Verse 37. Are you there? Yeah. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake. Say, thou also shalt not go into the... May hugot, ano? May hugot si Moises. Sabi niya, nakita ninyo maraming namatay. Tapos yung dalawa lang ang nakatapa. Pati ako, hindi ako nakasama. Even him, the great leader of Israel, was not allowed. Why? Walang sinasantong Panginoon. Kahit sa pinakamalit niya membro, kahit pastor ka ba, o preacher ka ba, hindi pwede. Are you with me now? Hindi pwede ko sindihin ang Panginoon. Hindi kasi naman, ano naman yan eh. Siya naman ang leader ninyo, kaya hindi. No! Everybody will give account to that holy God that we serve. Are you with me now? We are serving a God which is not biased. We are serving a God that is holy and just. We are serving a God that has punishment for sins. And so we have to learn this lesson. I as your pastor have to learn. Si Moises na nga yan. Hindi pa nakatuloy. Tapos maglalakas ako ng loo. May bali na. May pastor naman ako. Ayaw me. Di bali na. Assistant naman ako ng pastor. Di bali na. I'm thankfully not the church. Si Moises hindi nakaligtas. Mas faithful sa atin yun. Buho pa ng note para ang Diyos nga. Countenance pa lang niya. Ang tindi na. Leadership pa lang niya. Kaya nakita niyo, kinain ng lupa yung mga nag-rebelde. Pero pagdating sa dulo, hindi pwede sa Lord. Walang Moses, Moses sa kanya. Ang ibig sabihin, lahat tayo mananagot sa Diyos. May nakakakita man sa iyo o wala, mananagot tayo sa Diyos. We have to learn from that lesson as well. Wherever we are, whoever we are, God's holiness does not change. He remains holy and just whatever you are. Ano mang gawin natin palusot, malusotan niyo man si pastor. Hindi ko man alam ang inyong mga pinagkatago-tago. Are you with me? May Diyos na nakakakita sa atin. And the wisdom in the wilderness is this. God has His own punishments for sin and wickedness. Are you with me now? We have to learn the wisdom. Kailangan po natin matutunan yan. Kailangan po yung matutunan. Alam niyo ba? Kasi hindi naman lagi nakikita niyo ako. Tama po ba? Hindi lagi nakikita ko kayo. 
Pero mga kapatid, itong nangyari sa wilderness ang magsisilbing leksyon ng bawat isa sa atin. Ba, teka, teka. Oo nga, hindi alam ni Pastor ang nangyayari. Pero teka, alam na alam mo, Panginoon, hindi tama itong ginagawa ko. At naniniwala akong buhay ka at makapangyarihan ka. Lord, patamarin mo. Tulungan mo kung itama ito sa harapan mo. Amen? That is a wonderful lesson of the wilderness. His punishments. Another thing is the privilege. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7. Ready to read. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them? You found Egypt so great a nation. All these technologies during that time was my. It's fast. It's it's uh, what we call it. It's uh, magnificent. The pyramids, the power of Egypt. They have all. But do they have a God that's so close to them? Uh -huh. There is a God of light. There is a God of river. There is a God of harvest. There is a God of the sun. And you know what happened? The ten plagues probed them all as nothing. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Wala na. Wala palang sinabi yung mga Diyos nila kung saan hinaalay nila minsan pati mga sarili nilang anak. These pagan nations were even offering their own children alive and being burned just to offer it to their God that has nothing to do with power. Huh? Are you with me? Nakakita na ba kayo ng bansa? Sabi niya na mayroong Diyos sila na sobrang close sa kanila. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him for, there is nothing, folks. And you have to realize that. Sino ba tayo? That's why, for me, personally, I can speak for myself. Anything, anything good that I can see in my life right now, anything that I enjoy right now, I have to see this thing as a great privilege from the Lord. Yeah, Starting from my salvation and the rest of it that makes me smile and it's all by the grace of God. Kayo walang makakapagilabang sa atin. Walang makakapagsabi na po, it's my life, I don't want you, I don't like to serve, I don't like to thank the Lord. No! You have to see everything as a privilege. Pribileyo ito, Panginoon. You cannot see a God so close to them as the Lord your God is in all things that we call upon Him. Simple tubig lang sa mapait na tubig ay napatamis ng Panginoon para sa kanila. Kahit anong basa. Remember in the time of Elijah and the prophets of Baal? They are about 400 prophets. They have done everything to call on their God but it was dead. And Elijah asked fire from heaven and it didn't happen. Why? Because of the great and living God that they have and we have as well. It is a privilege. Lahat po ng meron tayo ngayon ay isang dakilang pribilehyo na nanggaling po sa ating kaligtasan. Kaya dapat kang magpasalama. Dapat kang mamangha. Dapat mong i-treasure. Dapat huwag mong sayangin. Dapat kang maging maligaya. Huwag kang magmukmuk sa isang tabi. Ikaw ay may pribilehyo kasi anak ka ng Diyos na may likha ng langit at lupa. It was a privilege. All of this wilderness, despite of the rocks and the desert and the dry land and the tiring walking for the past 40 years, it was still indeed a privilege from the Lord. Pribileyo pa rin eh. Sayang nga lang talaga yung mga naunang nagpasaway. Nakita mong lang sana nila nung pagdating nila, magkukunting pass forward tayo when they arrived after the crossing of the Jordan River. For at last, after 38 years of mala and quail meat, they saw corn and milk and honey and plants. And you know what? Now, those things are their own. Sa kanila na yun! Ah. Hindi sila, hindi nila nakita yung nakilang pribilehyo ng paglalakad na yan. Eh napatagal lang din naman kasi nagpasaway sila di ba doon sa Kades Barnea? Pero sa totoo, malapit na eh. Konting hakbang lang, konting climb na lang ng mountain, ando na sila eh. Nagpasaway lang talaga sila kaya napahaba yung travel nila. But nevertheless, only if they understood that it was a great privilege having freedom from the powerful nation of Egypt. 
given such a title as God's people, sana hindi nila nakita ang sarili nila doon sa mga tuyot na daan na kanilang dinadaanan. Ha? Nagigisi mo yung aking ibig sabihin? Ha? Sana habang naglalakad sila sa wilderness, hindi nila inisip yung, madum, yung, yung tuyot na daan at yung pago. Sana naisip nila ba Egypt yun? Pinanaya tayo doon. Aba, saka makakita ng umuulan ng pagkain galing sa langit. Saka makakakita na yung mga pinkinagat na serpiente na buhay. Lahat ito, pribileyo. Kaya nga nung umapak sila mga kapatid doon sa land of Jericho, yung dalawang spice, alam niyo si Rehab, sinabi niya, kinala ko na kayo eh. Kinala ko na kayo. Bakit? Dinig na dinig na ng mga bayan dito kung ano ang ginawa ninyo kay Og at saka kay Sihon. Yung dalawang hari ng mga makapangyarihan. Mga mas matataas pa yung mga wala niya. Mas, matata, mas malalakas pa ang mga pwersa niya. Pero tinanong niyo, lahat ng tuhod na nangatog na sa inyo. Sayang hindi narinig yun ng mga naunang nag-complain. Uh-huh. Nang dahil lang sa pagkain, nang dahil lang sa tubig, nang dahil lang sa pagod, nang dahil lang sa ikit kay Moises at kay Aaron. Sayang at hindi sila nag-tears at nakita ang kanilang mga sarili ng mga taong may pribileyo na tinawag na anak ng Diyos. Uh-huh. That's why in any time you're so discouraged in life, do not ever forget you are still a privileged child of God. Uh-huh. You are still a privileged child. Minsan kasi naman tao na naman tayo, nahihigit din naman tayo. Uh-huh. Every time I see these people, mga, mga mayayaman, mga magagaling na tao, mga may-ari ng Tesla, ng, ng Microsoft, Di ba sila napapagod ka bibilang ng pera niya? Uh-huh. And this flesh would let you be, you know, envious about it. Are you with me now? No, we can, we can work hard and learn and get these things. But ang ibig ko lang sabihin, no, parang kung minsan, pag nakakakita tayo ng iba na parang mas maraming meron kaysa sa tayo, parang magang naiinggit tayo at parang magang minamaliit natin ang ating buhay. As if we're, you know, we see our lives as nothing or no, folks, listen, remind yourself of the wisdom of the wilderness. Even during that walking time of the wilderness, you have to realize you are a privileged child of God. The privilege you should not forget. And last but not the least of the lessons or the wisdom in the wilderness are the precepts that were given by the Lord. Since the time of Exodus, then Leviticus, you know the laws that were given, the precepts of God, they are the only people that had these clear commandments from the Holy God. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 8. Ready, read. And what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgment so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Can you find an age? Di ba pinakita kanina sa inyo? O the Camorabi, yung mga, mga laws of other nations. Nung inaaral ng mga skola, kung papangit ng mga batas nila. Saka makakita na panahon pa lang ng Israel, tinuturo na sila ng tamang hygiene, uh-huh. ng tamang diet, ng tamang, tamang husgado. It was a perfect law. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Uh-huh. The statutes of the Lord are right. Tapi, buksan nga natin yung psalm. Psalm 19, Psalm 19, if you would. What was with these laws? What was with this Torah that God has given to Moses to these people in the wilderness? Psalm 19, verse number 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Hmm? The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. You know what they had that time? During the pronouncement of Joshua 1 8, in the book of Joshua, they had this pages of the scriptures and my it was pure and perfect and you know what you have today an additional three fourths of the book the law of the Lord is perfect comforting the soul the wisdom in the wilderness is that who are these people
people that were called slaves in Egypt having a perfect law that can guide them throughout history. Not just lifetime, but until today. Folks, we have a more complete book right now, including the new covenant that was given through Christ. Precious are the statutes and judgments of God. And I have a complete very words of God. Which we tend to forget and take too lightly for many times. Minsan nababaliwala ako natin ang Bible natin. Minsan hindi natin na, naiintindihan kung anong pagpapala meron ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya bawat preaching service mahalaga. Bawat online service mahalaga. Bawat time that you can open it and read and pray to God is important. Why? These are incredible, wonderful, magnificent, perfect, pure precepts of the Holy God. Yeah. It was righteous. It was holy. It was guiding. And it leads to salvation. The law is the schoolmaster of grace. What introduced grace to the people of the New Testament is the law of God that was given to the people in the wilderness. Kaya naiintindihan natin ang halaga ng grasya kasi nasaksihan natin ang batas sa panahon na yan. Pinakita ng Panginoon sa tao na kahit anong kaya mong gawin, hindi mo kaya niligtas ang iyong sarili. Kaya inintroduce sa new covenant na may tagapagligtas. That's why, that's why we can understand right now that salvation is by grace and never of works. Salvation is by love. Salvation is by pride. Salvation is by grace through faith. Because of the introduction of the law. And now we have law and grace combined in one book. Love the word of God. Yeah. Wisdom in the wilderness is this. We have the precepts of an eternal wise God. Kaya ang ibig sabihin, kung ang anak ng Diyos makikinig dito kahit sa love life, hindi ka magsisisi. Do you get the point? Sa lahat ng uri ng iyong buhay, sa lahat ng pakikitungo sa tao, sa lahat ng mga decisions making mo, only if you would know the very principles of God, you will never be deceived by false teachings and any doctrine that are right there in the front of our eyes. Maraming mapandarayang ideolohiya na kukunin ang ating isip. Di ba sinet ko nga yan, being rooted and built up in Him. When we have the truths of God, my, magugulat kayo na sabi ng sabi, Psalm 119, verse 97. Ako sa hindi pa nakakaalam, there is a whole chapter about the Word of God. Psalm 119. There is a chapter about faith, Hebrews chapter 11. A chapter about love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, a chapter about hope somewhere in the book of Psalms. But there is a whole chapter, and this is the biggest chapter in the whole Bible. A chapter about God's word, about God's precepts. Psalm 119 verse 97 says, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Are you there? Amen. Verse 98. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients. Because I keep, you see that? Not just understanding, but keeping. If you obey the word of God, you can be more in wisdom. You can have more wisdom than the old people. Are you there? Because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy isn't it a blessing to have the Bible? Are you with me, folks? Hindi ba napakalaking biyaya? Wala tayong pang Ateneo at pang kung saan man tayo makakapangaral at magiging matalim na tayo. Pero dahil may Bible tayo, may church tayo, meron tayong panahon na aralin ito, natututunan natin ang buhay. Hindi tayo basta-basta malilingaw sa kuha ng mga toro. Alam natin kung ano ang totoo at kung ano ang nararapan. Hindi tayo magiging panatiko ng sino man o ng ano man. Dahil meron tayong mas nakakataas na talino na nanggagaling sa Diyos. 
na lumikha sa atin at sa lahat. And as a conclusion, Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, as we end, we have already read the verses, just try to go back for a while and end this message here. The wisdom in the wilderness. Verse number 4 about the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Are you there? Amen. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Live a life under obedience to the Lord. Somehow we are being rebuked, even me, with such words. Not just love your God. Because it's easy to say, I love you, Lord. Uh, or if somebody would ask you, do you love God? Of course, it is easily to be to say, I love the Lord. But God said, with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all power, with all effort, would you love God? Would you obey His words? Would you rather have Jesus than anything this world can offer? With all thy heart, live a life under obedience to the Lord. The blessedness of it or the destruction of it depends on our obedience to God. Another thing that Moses was telling them, teach your children about Him throughout your lifetime. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, verse number 7, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. What a command from God. Parents, are you here with me? I have to teach my son every time we wake up, or before we sleep, or when we are sitting together, or having our meal. It is a privilege and as well a command from the Lord for me to tell Ruin Sam we are, we are serving the living God. Amen. They have to know Him. Kailangan nilang malaman. Kasi may ibigay mo man lahat ng kailangan nila sa buhay. Kung hindi mo may papakilala ang Diyos sa kanila, magiging lesson po yung nangyari sa judges. At ganun din naman sa wilderness. Baliwala ang lahat. Baliwala ang lahat. Kung hindi natin may tuturo sa kanila ang nararapa. Teach your children about it throughout your lifetime. First, uh, point number three, be loyal to Him and Him alone. Loyalty to Christ. Love your pastor. Love your family. Obey your parents in the Lord for that is right. But be loyal to Christ. Whoever He would be that would stand at the back of any pulpit that you will listen, your loyalty is through and to Christ alone. Are you with me, folks? Ang loyalty natin sa Kanya. Maging loyal tayo pag may tukso. Maging loyal tayo pag may over na hindi tama. Maging loyal tayo pag may mga bagay na may mga hilayin tayo sa buhay. Let us be loyal to God. Amen? Let us worship Him with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our soul. Let these words, I love you, Lord, be true with Him. Amen? Be loyal to Him and Him alone. Loyalty and allegiance to Almighty God through Christ our Savior. Oh. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord for the wisdom in the wilderness. Their experiences throughout 40 years is a wonderful lesson we can take. Principles that we can live by as long as we live this life on earth. Amen? Let us all be standing and praying.